Good morning, Layla Grace. You need to get out of bed. Mommy needs to make the bed because she has to pack. Can you help with that? Can you help? No, you just want to sleep. See your face. Let me see your face. Ready to get up? Ready to get up? Y'all, it is six o'clock on Wednesday afternoon, and I am on vacation for the next ten fucking days. Yes. What are we doing? You going to Grandma Grandpa's house? We going to Grandma Grandpa's? Where are we going? Where are we going? Come on. You ready to go? You ready to go? You ready to go? You ready to go? Okay. Okay, we go for a ride? We go for a ride? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We have checked into our hotel and it is the strangest room I've ever been in. <laughs> like there's like, like this is the doggy door portion so your dog can just go up here. But it doesn't actually close. So it's kind of weird. I don't know, there's a nice little desk there. And after you sit at your desk, you can look down. Wow, hello, hello. This is such a strange room. I kind of like like it because it's weird and has character, but it's very strange. Anyway, we are in Columbus. I will give you an update again in a little bit, but I'm on my balcony. I'm going to do some Evita, sing some Evita songs. Sorry, neighbors. We have to do our fitness because we didn't do our fitness this morning before work like we were supposed to. And we were gonna go for a walk outside, but it's 11.30 at night and we don't know what part of town we're in. So, I'm doing some lovely Sansa. And husband's just walking in the background. This is our sad life. I have to do some knee lifts, so I gotta stop filming. Just know that we're working out. Even though it's late. Stopped at our first Roadside America stop of the day. This is the Hartman Rock Garden. Here it is. This is in Springfield, Ohio. It's beautiful. It is so beautiful. This is such a cool thing.
what are you doing? He just be, oh, whoa, 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 I see you. Hello. Be good, baby. Stay over there, stay over there. Oh my God, that was terrifying. Indiana, what the fuck are you doing? Just proof that the dog is okay. You can see in the window, just chilling in the middle of a state route. the world's largest or tallest candle. I don't know if it's largest or tallest or both. And you know we bought some shit. I'll show you what I bought later. Hey everybody, it is Thursday afternoon. It is about 2 p.m. Eastern time. We are maybe an hour from Central Time. I don't know, close. We are on the road. So we started our journey last night. We drove to Columbus and that was where the crazy balcony, indoor balcony hotel room was. And we are now in Indiana. We are stopping, we're taking the scenic route because this is just a journey kind of vacation. I don't know what the word, it's like a road trip where you're stopping to see cool stuff along the way and it's not so much about getting to a place, it's about seeing shit along the way. So we've been stopping to see a lot of shit along the way. And now our next stop we are trying to see, there is a memorial placard for Elvis's last concert. <laughs> That's where we're headed next. And then we will be heading to Casey, Illinois, which I'm super pumped about. And that is the land of all the very giant things. You did see the world's largest or tallest candle. We did see that. That was at a different part of Indiana. And now we'll be going to Casey. And Casey is Illinois, I think. And I think Illinois is where the time zone changes. So stay tuned for more exciting adventures. Ooh. We're here at Whole Foods. Wait, wait. We're at an Elvis time capsule. What? largest mailbox. I want to send a letter, but I don't know. I don't have a letter to send. This is troubling. I am inside the mailbox. You can climb into the mailbox. Husband's not going to be able to find me. I'm going to go pee. It's very hot here. And a lot of direct sunlight. I'm realizing I can do these steps up. They're gonna give me vertigo going down. So this was perhaps not my wisest decision. Here we are. At the top. I don't have any mail to send. I'm really bummed. I don't have a card or anything. There's town. There's the largest barber pole. There's the largest rocking chair and there's the wind chime and then over there's the bird cage. Oh, look at that. Hmm. <laughs> 
the view from our hotel room right now. Holy shit. That's the arch. It's right fucking in front of us. Look at that. Oh, so exciting. It's a pretty sweet room, actually. They left the TV on, which was kind of creepy. But there's Bear all tucked in. It's very spacious. There we go. I cannot believe this view. Oh my God, this makes my whole freaking day. All right, checked into our hotel. You saw the amazing views. Now we're going for a little sunset kind of walk here. The sunset is actually behind us. So we'll see where we can go here. We did miss the visitor center time. There's some sunset skies over there. So we're gonna do, we're not gonna leave until after I get my stamp in the morning. My stamps are very important to me. Did it work? Hmm? You're the fucking best. Well, you actually figured that out. You get the Wi-Fi on so Hey. My computer has been having a fucking stupid glitch for the last two Can hours. You turn off the, the hotspot? Yeah, turn off the hotspot now. And husband has been letting his steak, his <laughs> subpar steak get cold, trying See, to fix it. It's par. It's okay. It's par? Okay. I'll put this Ruth's Chris Steakhouse out of five. Yeah. Two if you actually factor the price. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. You did it. I'm proud of you, baby. This asparagus has depression. <laughs> wow. Deep. Stopped at the Arch this morning to get my National Park passport stamps. There it is. You can see, I think that's the sun going behind it there. We've been, we got some pretty cool pictures of the sun like glinting behind it, so... I'll show you my stamps that I got here. So they have the rangers do the stamps for you. And so there are my stamps that I got today. So it was called Jefferson Expansion Memorial or something like that. Now it's called Gateway Arch. And then there's the 50th anniversary. And then this is the National Parks Centennial in 2016. So pretty cool. You can see the sun right up there. Right there. Yeah. ending point we're doing this backwards we're doing the world's shortest st patrick's day parade um do you want to sing some u2 babe no. i can't live with or without you Whoa. that's as much u2 as i got in me today there it is we did it we completed do you want to do it in the right direction do you want to do it the right direction okay okay y'all it was canceled this year because of covid but we have decided to recreate the world's shortest and smallest St. Patrick's Day Parade with some U2 in the background. Here we go. We're marching yes. right across the street. Do you feel particularly Irish today, babe? Suddenly. We did it! Ending point.
So we've reached the end of the buffalo pasture. So they have this little fence here. And then so you can get out, you have to go over this creepy floor that buffaloes cannot go on, I guess. I can almost not go on. It requires a lot of coordination. But now we are buffalo safe. They cannot come over here, sadly. cute this little it's been so nice to like sit and have a glass of wine fucking covid troll is definitely definitely gonna come out there and get husband Lose your glasses in there, Fox. Can you see the troll? No. There he is. Oh, he's so creepy. good times so I appreciate the fact that whoever made this park put these dinosaurs behind fences for our safety because this one looks a little rowdy I don't know if I trust him that one trustable this one high as balls look at that face he's like what but he's safely behind this fence so we don't have to worry what? All right, it's Saturday afternoon. We are headed to the next national park, which is the Capulin Volcano. And we are in New Mexico now. And we just stopped to see the dinosaur statues, which were really cute. And now we are headed up north to go see the volcano. So we will see. It's 81 degrees, but the sun is very hot. I don't know what the weather's gonna be when we get to the volcano, but hopefully we can hike around the top of it. It's like a one mile loop and you get to drive to the top, so that'll be pretty cool. Um, we were in Oklahoma earlier, and Oklahoma has terrible roads, and I'm glad that we are now in New Mexico, which has at least so far better roads. We'll see what this, what this drive will bring.
very dry. But also, there was snow recently. <laughs> Sunday morning. I just climbed up a hill, that's why I'm breathing so terribly. <laughs> this is Cross of the Martyrs, I believe it is called. I'm gonna look it up because it might be problematic, but it makes for a pretty scene. It is gorgeous up here. I did not think I would get to see those desert mountains this year, and to be anywhere near desert mountains right now is like heart needs that. Husband's still sleeping. He's like, I'm not getting up early to go see a weird cross on a hill. And I was like, well, you know, there's more than that. It's peaceful. It's quiet. Santa Fe is fucking beautiful. Just look at it out there. I am definitely going to make a point that we come back here. There are three national park sites that we could have seen that were within an hour's drive of Santa Fe. We didn't go to them because they were closed and they actually have gates. We talked to the ranger at, where were we yesterday? Uh, the volcano, Catalan Volcano. And they said that both of the sites that are down here close at 4.15 and it's like closed, closed. So we'll have to come back at another point and do that. I'm gonna go up this. I can go up here. I'm gonna see what's up this hill. It's an even better view. All right, I'm gonna try this. Anyway, my ass is coming back to New Mexico. I am coming back to Santa Fe as soon as there's not a fucking pandemic on. You just wait. So here is the view from up that little hill that I just mentioned. Just a little farther away. Just a little bit more mountains you can take in in one shot. You know? Just, just a little bit. There's the cross again. There's so many cool shops here that I walked past that I want to go in, but they're all closed, obviously, because it's only 7 a.m., but, you know, like, just so much to see here. So cool. I feel, like, really pumped about this aspect of our trip, 
that we found all these cities that I'm like, I want to go spend a weekend there. Indianapolis, St. Louis, now Santa Fe. I'd like to spend longer than a weekend here because hashtag the desert. <laughs> Just gonna run away to the desert, let's be honest. Anyway, I'm glad we did this trip. I was very anxious about it. And today on our last day, headed up into one of my favorite national parks. I am feeling very, very glad that we did it. It was the right thing. All right, so I'm doing my research, okay? So yeah, problematic, I think. Here's my analysis. In 1680, it says Spanish settlers were here, right? And they were colonizing, you know, like Spanish settlers do. And so there was also a drought that year and it was a bunch of conflict between the Native Americans who lived here and the Spanish people, including the church, who were trying to be up in everybody's business and take over. And so the Pueblo Native Americans, led by this guy named Pope, revolted. And they drove the Spanish settlers out of New Mexico. And then there was like a big battle. And this monument is for the priests, the Franciscan priests who were killed during that battle. And yeah, so I was trying to read the sign at the top though. There were like several Native American people on the sign, not like a lot, but a handful. So I don't know if those were like Native Americans who had converted to whatever the fuck. I don't know what religion missions are. Like, as much as I, like, am obsessed with mission uh, architecture, you would think I would know these things, but I don't. And I really need to do some research. So I'm putting this on my list of things I want to research. Is how do you reconcile a really beautiful and peaceful place like this with the fact that the Spanish shouldn't have even been colonizing in the first place, you know? these things. I have to work through these things and figure out. This is where we are. So here's, this is historic Fort Marcy Park is where this is. Oh, here's the sign. Here we go. We'll go over and read the sign. Like, you know, should they not just also do a monument to any of the Native Americans who were killed during this battle, you know? Like, they were here first. There's the sign. So, I'm learning a lot. I fucking love learning about history, and then I forget that I love learning about history, and then I don't look at it until it appears in front of me, and then I'm like, that's right, I love this. There's Arizona and the Navajo Nation behind it. This is where Four Corners would be if we were allowed in. That's the New Mexico sign. It's completely covered with stuff. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. And yeah, here we go. Somehow we pulled over and five other cars pulled over at the same time. We all were here at the same moment. I don't understand, but there we go. It closed.
Sunday evening. We just did a hike here in Canyonlands where the visitor center just closed. Uh, they closed an hour early so I didn't get my stamps. So that is, I got two out of four stamps this trip. Not, not ideal, but pandemic, what are you gonna do? So anyway, we stopped here to use bathroom and get some Wi-Fi so we could get enough service to get our directions back to our Airbnb in Moab where we're staying. This is our last national park of the trip, our last big stop of the trip. And yeah, so we're going to dinner tonight at a place that we love in Moab that has outdoor seating. And then tomorrow morning we head back on the train. Here's husband. So a little bit later than I had thought things would be, but such is life. <laughs> This is where we're staying tonight in Moab. I'm gonna be like, husband, sorry, I'm sleeping in this cute little like, it's like a bunk bed without a bottom bunk. Look at that. Anyway, this is called the Purple Sage Apartments. It's really cute. So if you are traveling to Moab, I'll show you the bathroom. Here's the bedroom. If you are just like one person or a couple traveling to Moab, this is like an awesome place to stay. It's off the main drag a little bit, but my, like, Three blocks, I think. Here's the kitchen, a huge kitchen. And then check this out, watch. We go on the back door here. Look at that. Isn't this, well, can you see? Isn't this cute as hell? I like, I'm in love with this. And then that's laundry over there. That little place right there is laundry. Next to that, there's a hot tub, which I'm not gonna use because I didn't bring a bathing suit because I didn't think about it. But yeah, it's way cute here super super good find and it was like dirt cheap because we booked like last minute so really awesome yeah so we're gonna get showered up and we are headed to dinner in about 45 minutes
bed. What are you doing? Are you taking a nap? Got to. Hello. This is a very productive. Got a fitness in. Got a coffee. Got a cool picture. That's, That's right. Hello everybody, it is Monday night. We are on the train, we are in Denver. You just saw that exciting footage of us. Well, I don't think, you, I think I cut it off before we ran up the stairs. Basically, uh, we have made friends with our dining car attendant and I don't know his name and I feel like a real asshole, but we have been chatting with him all day. And he's a camera person, he does photography, he does wedding photography and everything. He does like real photography. So he saw my camera and he was like, oh, started chatting about us. Anyway, we've been talking the whole time, every time we've gone to get a meal. So anyway, you in Denver, you have about half an hour and you can get out and walk around the city. So we went out for like a little walk just to get some fitness in and I wanted to find a cappuccino, which I got. And so we're like walking back and you have to be back. They said you'd be back at the train at seven because at 7.10 is when we leave. So we're like trying to get back. It's like 6.59 and as we're walking up, there's our guy and he's like, I've been waiting for you too, come on. And he like runs forward and we go running after him. He was like, you have to get this cool picture and I will insert the picture here that we took. And it's from, it's a view of Union Station, the, the big beautiful Union Station sign and the train underneath it and the night, the sun setting sky behind it. And I was just like, it was just such a cool moment. And this is why I love the train because this shit doesn't happen on planes, you know what I mean? So I feel like, I don't know. There's still good in the world. There's still good humans out there because it was just so cute. He was like, I had to come find you guys and bring you up here because I know you'd love this picture. So we were waiting. They're doing a little bit of maintenance on the train. We should have been leaving in about five minutes, but they had to do some maintenance. So we're going to be here a little bit longer. I don't know how much longer, but we got the sealer game on. I got my cappuccino and everything is right in the world right now. afternoon we just arrived in Chicago we now have over three hours to kill before our train departs for Pittsburgh this is my stuff behind me there. see husband behind me <laughs> hi anyway we are just walking around we're gonna try to finally find a corn dog 